Thank you once again in our first story, research-based organization, Odikro, which recently scored and publicized the data on the performance of members of, on the floor of parliament, of the Sit parliament, has apologized for capturing MP for Domi Kwabenya, Madame Achua Safo, as one of the worst performing members of parliament, speaking to me earlier on news desk, director in charge of evaluation and monitoring at Odikro, Kina Likimani, corrected the publication, and she says it was a graphic error, observing that Madame Adjoa Safo is rather one of the highest ranking women members of parliament, and she said she is the highest. I want to first apologize to Honorable Adjoa Safo. In our fact sheet, which is just a small portion of the report, she is listed among the worst, but actually in our facts and in the report, she's number 58. She's the highest ranking woman. So we apologize for the error in the fact sheet. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. in, in, in this fact sheet that I have here, mm -hmm. for the best MPs, there's mm -hmm. only one woman, mm -hmm. and uh, she's for uh, Takwa Insu, mm -hmm. um, Gifty mm -hmm. Eugenia Kusi. Mm -hmm. But you just clarified. Could you just go over that again? So what we, um, 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 Ajwa Safo is the highest ranked woman. So that's... We apologize for the error in the fact sheet. She's the highest ranked woman. Um, when it comes to the scorecards itself, we did 40% on attendance, mm. and we did 60% on statements and contributions on the floor. So you are saying that Adra Safu was very vocal. So was she's very the vocal. highest ranking MP. Yeah, woman. Woman. Yes. And I want to address... Woman MP. Yes. Okay. Odikro is an open... It's a parliamentary monitoring organization that uses open data. We are an open data organization. Open data refers to the information that institutions make public about their work. We base our work, and I want to reiterate, on what we get from parliament. The committee, parliament has over 30 committees on various issues and sectors. The committee reports that we get, well, it's a, it's a summary report. It does not attribute any to any member of that committee any statement that they made so for instance we have someone like honorable Bashir, who has done a lot of work and honorable adjustafa who who have done a lot of work at the committee level but the committee level reports that we get that are open to the public are given to the public will not say um, honorable Bashir said so it's this. difficult to tell it is it's who, not even difficult it is completely impossible possible to tell so when people say that then our scorecards are flawed we are saying that it is limited for this first report, we limited ourselves to the work in Parliament that reflects the mandate of Parliament and its members. We recognize very much so that we, in the future, we would buy ourselves or in collaboration with bigger organizations, for instance. We want to look at the perception of the MPs' work, what they are using, their share of the common fund is. So that sometimes you have an MP that is ranked, we've ranked low by the data, but the, the constituents love. So we would like to um, um, have a, 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 we would want to move towards a scorecard mm. that is a bit more comprehensive. But for this first one, um, it, we feel that we the job we've done is right for the data that we had. Okay. And so but it allows us to move forward and look at other things. Based on your 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 rankings mm -hmm. here, someone can be worse MP according to the data mm -hmm. that you've mm -hmm. uh, gathered, mm -hmm. but maybe performing well at the constituency level. Yeah, but we are parliament. Yes, they can. But let's, let's be, um, we should also be mindful about performance at the constituency level. Parliament and parliamentarians have a mandate to represent their constituencies and to pass bills, and they have an oversight role, um, oversight mandate of the executive. That is, those are the three primary roles of parliamentarian. The fact that our system allows parliament to go, parliamentarians when they are campaigning to go and say, um, I'll, I'll bring provide you votes this, on I'll this, provide that, that doesn't mean that that was also not important. Later, we can look at how does an MP actually deliver these things? Because some of them do. It's not out of their pockets. We are aware of some MPs who are um, who are better able to, um, let's say, liaise with the executive exactly. and its programs to mm. drive um, development, development to their, their area. And so that's something we want to measure because we want to encourage MPs are really the most powerful politician in their constituency. So for you, district. for you, uh, working at the constituency level is not as important as making arguments on the floor of parliament. Yes, but we would like to actually also look at that in future. Well, a statement released by Odikro uh, states that all scorecards as published on the fact sheet uh, should be disregarded. Uh, all reference to the subject should be made to publications online and Facebook accounts of Odikro. 
And so I will bring you more of that. And notwithstanding, how has Ajoa Safo performed at the constituency level? John News is a fire of Unstinui has been speaking to some of the Dome Kwabinya constituents and has come through with his report. 50 members of parliament have been named the West Dome MPs between the year 2012 and 2016. That's the one So, so, so you do think that the report, according to the report, so Muka says she's the worst performing MP. It is true. So she's not doing enough. Yes, yes. Maybe it can be true. It's true. Why, why, why are you saying it's true? Because as for the day, you know, if I would be quite, say, there is a rules in there, the beer, what's here, no, say, put to the bar, there's a little pass why, and put to Duma, Bayo, area, no, never mind if I who say, eh, 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 the <laughs> has not been doing anything profitable. So, and that's what I'm doing. Um, and then this area around the world is doing well. Okay. Uh, those are some residents of Dome Kwabenya, the constituency of Adjoa Safu, and they are sharing their thoughts with us on her performance so far. Now, Parliament is expected to debate the report of the Appointments Committee on the vetting of the first batch of President Kufaru's ministerial nominees. Today, the committee has so far voted 13 out of the nominees. Gakpo, uh, my colleague Joseph Opoku Gakpo joins us live with more. Good morning, Joseph. What is happening on the floor of Parliament now? Um, ben, it's on the floor at the moment. There is a conversation ongoing about the recent Tekoa's intervention in the Gambia to ensure that President Adam Abaru helped take over and that uh, former President Yajame steps down. Uh, the Member of Parliament for Futu, Alexander Fenio Markin, made a statement on the floor. He lauded ECOWAS for the intervention. He expressed happiness that ECOWAS actually provided troops to support President Adama Barrow. And he also made the point that it was a good move that Ghana committed troops to that particular ECOWAS uh, activity. Just after he delivered that statement, the member of parliament for the Adaklu area, Kwame Agboja, also uh, rose up to contribute to the conversation. He is raising issues with how come um, Parliament was not consulted in the decision that President Akufuado took to allow 205 Ghanaian troops to join that particular ECOWAS exercise. Well, once that is done, the next item that is on the table for the House to look at would be for the chairman of the Appointment Committee of Parliament, that the Honorable Joe Wusu, to move a motion and make the point that regardless of the standing orders of the House, which requires that any time that any document is laid, will require 48 hours before then they debate it. They will be laying the first report of the Appointment Committee of Parliament on the President Ministerial Appointment, 13 of them. They will be moving the motion on the floor of the House today. And regardless of the standing orders, a debate on that will be undertaken. And the expectation is that that motion will be adopted before the close of day. So we're waiting for that to happen. All right. Uh, thank you, Joseph, for those updates. And uh, is there any other thing happening on the floor of Parliament? 
All right, uh, we seem to have lost Joseph on the line uh, there, my colleague Joseph Opoku Gakpo, bringing us some updates uh, from the floor of Parliament. And we know uh, that the Chairman of Parliament's Appointments Committee will submit the report of the 13 ministers designate who have been vetted so far. Now, some anti corruption campaigners have described Ghana's recent slump in the fight against corruption as a bad sign for the country. The latest Corruption Perception Index report by Transparency International says Ghana has dropped four percentage points and is now ranked number 70 in the world. The report cited this performance as the lowest in Ghana's CPI scores since 2012 when the scores became comparable. Let's get more from uh, the Ghana Integrity Initiative, Linda Ofori Kwafo. Uh, good afternoon, madam, and thanks for your time. Good afternoon. How good does this afternoon. news come across listening. to you? Hello? Hello, ma'am. Uh, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I'm asking how uh, the news of Ghana's uh, drop in four percentage points in the uh, CPI comes across to you. For us in the sector and for us who do anti-corruption advocacy, I must say it was expected because of the happenings in the recent past. When we talked about the number of sources that were used to compute Ghana's CPI score, you realize that they mainly fall within 2015 and 2016. And we are talking about CPI score for 2016. So the number of things that lingered on that we have not been able to resolve, the Wuyome case might be a factor, the judicial corruption scandal might be a factor, the issues about the past with Brandon might have influenced people's perception of corruption within the public sector in Ghana. So a number of things might have influenced. The election period was also a season during the, the, during the election season. You know when our campaigning starts and the numerous vote buying and all those issues would go a long way to influence people's perception of corruption in a country. And it's very important and it's practice to state that this is a composite in this. So a number of surveys have been pulled together and the results aggregated and uh, countries have been scored and ranked accordingly. So we have surveys like the World Bank, African Development Bank, Economic Intelligence Unit, and their surveys have been pulled together, and countries have been scored and ranked accordingly. So now, this is how Ghana performs, and we have to take it in good faith and see what we can do. Well, but a lot of people raise the argument that, uh, for example, the Ford uh, gift saga you talk about was brought to the public uh, domain because of uh, my colleague's expose, Manasseh Azuri Awene. Some believe that there should be a clear distinction between what government is doing in fighting corruption and thus such corrupt activities come to the limelight and what people perceive as corrupt activities in itself. Thank you very much. As I mentioned earlier on, there are a number of surveys that are carried out during a, a, over a year or two within each country. So we have 13 sources for this year's CPI. These surveys have a section on corruption and the act, uh, business people and people who uh, effort, country efforts, a number of questions. They can ask questions about doing business in Ghana. How do you perceive corruption in that area? Such a business person might have engaged with institutions like GIPC, when engaged with the tax institutions, might have engaged with the Registrar General's Department. So those people are not just speaking because they've had some news in the air, but they are speaking because they might have a direct experience with corruption. They can be asked, so to what extent do you think that the government of Ghana or any other country in the survey is doing um, so the counter? Their responses will be the number of allegations in Kuti, number of allegations of corruption, and not much has been done to address them, but we are dealing with a small fish. And so we come that when people talk about perception, it's very, very close to reality. We are, because we are not talking about we, everybody in Ghana, we are talking about people in a particular district, we are talking about people who do business and what we call country assets that have been surveyed over a period of time, and these are the responses that have been aggregated and we have been scored accordingly. So the government might be doing a lot, but these things could also fuel or influence. Let me give you another example. If you look at Qatar, for instance, Qatar was the worst performer, not in terms of how much they scored, but then how they declined. 
on the CPI. Charter declined by 10 percentage points. And this is a period, we're talking about a period when Charter was involved and was being investigated for the um, bribery issues in relation to hosting the World Cup. This might have actually affected Charter's performance. So the happenings within a country could lead to the country's performance, so far as uh, CPI is concerned, for it to drop. And that might have been the reason in Ghana's case. All right, so uh, for Ghana, we dropped four percentage points. But let's look at uh, the, the African view, because uh, a lot of people believe that the, uh, the African continent is the most corrupt one. But generally, over time, since 2012, uh, comparatively, is Africa doing better or not? Africa is doing well. Some countries are doing better than Ghana, and they continue to perform well on the CPI. Ghana equally does better than other countries. Let me give you some examples here. I made mention earlier on, I don't know whether I've said it already, I think about Botswana is always doing well. Even though they might have declined in their uh, call this year, they are always leading Africa. Talk about KZ, talk about Mauritius, Rwanda, before Namibia, Sisu, Sao Tome, and the rest always do better than Ghana. And uh, it is South Africa, with the, all the scandals, most of the not perform better than Ghana. Other African countries are also not doing well. And many African countries dominated the bottom of the CPI. Talk about Somalia, South Sudan, Sudan, Libya, Guinea Bissau. And even our neighboring countries are scoring within the range of 20 percentage points and the rest. Nigeria, for instance, scored uh, 28. Last year, they scored 26. So they improved by two, but they are so lower than Ghana. So the African region is not doing very, very well, although some countries are performing better than Ghana. When it goes to the, the global performance, Denmark and New Zealand continue to lead in the CPI. This time around, they are sure might have declined a bit, but still Denmark scored 90, and uh, uh, followed by Finland, mm. Finland 89, and Sweden 88. So, Finally, ma'am. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, sorry about that. We'd, we'd have to wrap it up quickly because of time. Finally, before you go, uh, what do you recommend the Ghana uh, should do to uh, increase our CPI index? We've actually outlined some recommendations of when we issued a statement that was at 4 a.m. And one of the things we said is that citizens will have to play a very important role in minimizing corruption here in Ghana, where we have provided avenues right, with a whistleblower, with the Ghana anti corruption uh, Ghana is actually just a lot and the rest. I pay the bribe website for students to report. Then the important subject of the new administration, promising we the Ghanaians of establishing an independent state prosecutor. And that is something we're looking forward to. Because the, in the past, the argument has been that the, the attorney general's office have not been able to prosecute corruption effectively for reasons because maybe they are peers or equal to the uh, other ministers. So we wanted somebody that will be very independent from any political influence and come and be the commission as same. I've watched, I've followed the version, I've seen the angle the, 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 the minority parliament are coming from whether it's possible under our current uh, constitutional arrangement. But that is something we need to discuss. It doesn't have to be within six months, but it's the process to start. Ghana needs an independent state prosecutor because prosecuting and sanctioning corruption we have not performed effectively in that angle. Right. Thank you very much, Madam Linda Ofori Kwafo. She's executive director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative, and she was speaking on the latest uh, corruption perception index uh, they've released. You're watching Join News today with me, Benis Abubed. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stories. Please stay with us.